Hello grade 8 students! So welcome dito sa aking channel at ang pag-uusapan natin today ay ang first lesson ninyo para sa quarter 3. So quarter 3, week 1 and it's all about mathematical system. So I hope na ready na kayo. So ihanda ang inyong puso at isip para sa mga bagong lesson or topics na matututunan nyo dito sa video natin today. And ang ating objectives are the following. You will learn how to describe a mathematical system and enumerate the parts of a mathematical system. So, mathematical system consists of some undefined terms, list of statements called axioms or postulates concerning the undefined terms, and one obtains a mathematical theory by proving new statements called theorems, using only the axioms, logic system, and previous theorem. So, you can see here that merong mga terms na connected sa ating mathematical system. Pero, pasisimplihan natin yung definition niya or yung meaning niya. So, ginawa ko is, eto, pinakita ko dito ngayon, visualize nyo yung apat na parts ng ating mathematical system. So, ang ating mathematical system ay composed nitong mga to. No? First is yung undefined terms. When we say undefined terms, these are the terms that are left undefined in the system. Instead of providing a definition for them, we resort to a description, illustration, or demonstration. So, ito yung mga general terms na ginagamit natin sa math na hindi natin talaga mabigyan ng explanation or I mean ng definition, exact definition. Mas naiintindihan natin siya by demonstrating or by illustration. So, ano ba yung example nitong undefined terms? Halimbawa na lang yung point. So, yung point, wala siyang exact definition. Pero pag nag-drawing tayo ng point, alam natin na yun ay point. So, that is an example of undefined, undefined terms. Next, isa pang part ng mathematical system is yung defined terms. So, ito naman yung mga terms defined from the undefined terms or defined terms. So, yung mga terms na ginamit natin dito sa undefined terms like point, line, ayan. Dito sa defined terms, gagamitin natin yung mga yun para makabuo tayo ng definition. Okay? So, later, papakita ko sa inyo yung mas concrete example about dito sa defined terms. Then, pangatlong part ng ating mathematical system is the actions or postulates. So, ito naman yung tinatawag nating mga statements that are considered true without proof or validation. So, ito yung mga obvious naman na na katanggap-tanggap or hindi mo na kailangang patunayan kasi iyon talaga siya. So, those are the statements. So, pag meron kayo nakita ganun, that is considered as actions or postulate. So, mamaya ipapakita ko yung example niya. And lastly, isa pang part ng ating mathematical system is the theorems. So, yung theorems naman, ito naman yung mga statements na proof to be true using postulates or actions. So, kapag napatunayan na natin yung isang statement, ginamitan natin ng mga actions or postulates, makakabuo ta tayo ngayon ng mga theorems. At alam ko na encounter na kayo ng iba't ibang theorems sa math. So, balikan lang natin yung ilan. So, ito yung mga example na binabanggit ko. So, yung mga undefined terms natin sa math is ito, yung point, line, and plane. So, wala yung mga exact definition. Pero, kapag dinrowing natin or dinemonstrate natin, magigets agad natin kung ano, ano siya, di ba? Like this one, yung point. So, hindi mo siya kayang edify exactly, pero pag nag-drawing ka ng point, alam mo na point yun. The same thing sa line. So, yung line, pag nag-drawing ka ng line, mas magigets ng tao kung ano yung ibig mong sabihin. Pero pag edinefine mo siya or pinaliwanag mo siya, parang ang hirap niya i-explain. So, those are the undefined terms sa mathematics. At itong mga undefined terms, yung point, line, and plane, ay ginagamit natin para makabuo tayo ng another definition or terms. So, dito na papasok yung defined terms. So, example, yung angle, parallel lines, circle. So, yung angle, na kuha natin yung angle dahil dito sa 
undefined terms. Kasi our, when we say angel, it is composed of so two rays uh, connected at one point. So makikita ninyo, yung pagkaka-define natin dito sa angel, ginamita natin ng mga undefined terms. Ano naman yung example na axioms or postulates? So, let's say, through any two points, there is exactly one line. So, which is true. Hindi mo na kailangan patunayan pa to kasi pag may dalawang points, natural, pag tinagdugtong mo yon may mabubuo ka talagang line. Diba? May ka ng guhit sa dalawang points na yon may mabubuo ka talagang one line. So, hindi mo na kailangan ng proof dito sa axioms or postulates. Ngayon, Sa theorems, kailangan mo ng proof. Kaya gagamitin mo ngayon yung mga axioms or mga postulates. So, example ng theorem is yung vertical angle theorem. Wherein, vertical angles are equal in measure. So, ito ay napatunayan natin totoo based dun sa mga nabuo na nating mga postulates or axioms about vertical angles. Kayo, may naaalala ba kayo na... Uh, mga bagay-bagay or mga axioms or postulates na na-encounter ninyo and at the same time, mga theorems. Okay, so I hope so. So, yun yung sinasabi or tinatawag nating mathematical system. Apat yung parts niya. Undefined terms, defined terms, axioms or postulates, and then yung theorem. At ito pa pala, ang theorem ay po pwede rin makabuo ng corollary. Ano naman to? So, it is a theorem that is easily proved as the consequence of another theorem. And, yung isa naman, yung lemma na tinatawag, a theorem that is introduced and proved so that a later theorem can be proved. So, this is what we call the helping theorem. But, mas magpo-focus na lang muna tayo sa mga theorems, okay, dun sa four parts. So, may mention ko lang to para alam nyo rin na yung theorems natin ay pwede rin magkaroon ng tinatawag na mga corollary or lemma. Now, ano-ano yung mga undefined terms? So, yun lang muna yung pag-usapan natin. Na-introduce ko na kanina yung undefined terms. So, binanggit ko na nga yung tatlo. So, when we say undefined terms, these are said to be the building blocks of geometry. So, dito nagsisimula ang lahat. So, they do not have formal definition. Hence, to have an understanding of their meaning, they offer general description. Ito na yung na-mention ko kanina. So, wala siyang formal na definition. Pero pas, mas maiintindihan mo siya pag describe mo. Alright? So, yan yung mga undefined terms. At ayan yung building blocks. So, dyan nag-start ang geometry. Nagsimula ang geometry sa point, sa sundan ng line, and then plane. Right? Okay. Now, what are the undefined terms? So, na-mention ko na kanina yung point. Point indicates a location or position in space. It has no dimension or actual size kasi pwede mag-iba-iba like this one. So, ito, apat yan yung point natin pero makikita nyo iba-iba yung kanyang uh, dimension or size. So, pwede malaki, maliit. So, it has no length, no width, and no height. Hindi mo pwedeng masukat ang point. Okay? Wala siyang ganun. Walang height. And a point is usually named with a capital letter. So, to name a point, so just write a capital letter. And in a coordinate plane, a point is named by an ordered pair. So, pagka uh, sa Cartesian plane, which is alam ko na encounter niyo na rin, ang point doon ay sinusulat natin as ordered pair. May X and Y. Alright? So, let's look at this part. So, the size of the dot drawn to represent a point makes no difference. Points have no size. They simply represent a location. So, pinapakita lang niya yung uh, position niya or location niya kung saan siya kaya mayroong point. Pero, it does uh, mean na meron siyang size or measurement. Alright, okay. then ano yung mga representation ng point in real life? Of course, yung tip of the needle, yung dulo ng needle, so that is a point, representation of a point. Period, isa rin yan. The sharp end of a pin, a very, very small stone, so that is also a point, and the tip of a pencil. Okay, now let's have the line, or sabihin na natin yung pinaka-basic, which is yung straight line. So, a line has no thickness. Okay? And a line's length extends 
in one dimension. So, extended yan. Both ends. nag extend siya. And a line goes on forever in both directions. Okay, ito na nga yun. And a line has infinite length, zero width, and zero height. So, when we say infinite, tuloy-tuloy siya. So, as you can see here, sa example natin, may guit tayo, pero ang makikita nyo dito is meron tayong arrowhead at the end. Ano ibig sabihin ng arrowhead sa dulo? Ibig sabihin yan, nakaturo yung arrow doon. So, ibig sabihin, extended yan, dere-derecho. So, forever yan. Infinite yan. The same thing here on the other side. So, si line may forever. Okay? Forever siyang extended. And, again, wala siyang uh, length, width, and height. A line is assumed to be straight. Siyempre, pag sinabi mong line, usually, ang papasok talaga sa isip mo ay straight line. A line is drawn with arrowheads on both ends. A line is named by a single lowercase script letter or by any two or more points which lie on the line. Okay, so nag-name -na tayo ng line. Uh, pwedeng, uh, pag, pwede natin gamitin yung dalawang points na nandito sa line. Okay, so pwede natin sabihin line A, B. Or, o pwede rin naman yung single uh, letter lang na hindi naka-bold, uh, hindi naka-uppercase, which is ito, naka-lowercase siya, tapos isang letter lang. Pwede rin yun. So, ibig sabihin yan, line L. And then, ito, line AB. So, pwede yun. Okay? Nakalimutan ko lang lagyan to. Dapat meron siyang arrow dito sa taas. Yung parang ganito, line. So, line AB. Examples ng representation ng line. Yung hair natin, di ba? Yung hibla ng hair. Clothesline. Magic swan. Welding rod. And bamboo. So, yan yung mga example ng ating line. Next. Isa pa na undefined term is yung plane. So, a plane has two dimensions. Okay, two dimensions siya. A plane forms a flat surface in extending indefinitely in all directions. So, a plane has infinite length, infinite width, and zero height. So, a plane is drawn as a four-sided figure resembling a tabletop or a parallelogram. So, ito siya. Ayan yung pinatawag natin. Plane. And, ang plane natin is named by a single letter or like this one, plane M. So, pwede rin ganun ng plane M. Or, pwede rin naman na gamitin natin yung mga points na nandito sa loob ng plane. So, pwede mo sabihin, plane A, B, C. Okay? So, while the diagram of the plane has edges, you must remember that the plane actually has no boundaries. So, wala siya talagang uh, boundaries. Kung baga, nire-represent lang natin siya na parang uh, parallelogram or parang four-sided figure. Pero in... Totoo yan, pag sinabi natin plane extended yan. Okay, it has no boundaries. Okay. Example ng plane. Top of the table, picture frame, chalkboard, television screen, and the floor. Okay, now let's have an exercise. So tell whether each of the following represents the idea of point, line, and plane. So the monitor screen. So ano kaya ang nare-represent ito? So, the monitor screen represent a plane. How about yung tip of a barbecue stick? So, yung tip naman ng barbecue stick is a point. One piece of broomstick. Anong sa palagay nyo? So, that is a line. How about the ruler? What is uh, the representation of a ruler? Okay, ruler is a line. And yung stars in the sky is also a point, just like a tip of a barbecue stick. Ayan. And napakarami. Uh, actually, lahat ng nasa paligid natin, uh, lahat yan nagsimula sa point, line, and plane. Okay, so napakahalaga na maintindihan ninyo tong mga undefined terms na to ng geometry. Then later, papakita ko naman sa inyo yung mga defined terms. Then yung mga axioms and theorems natin. Alright, so I guess stop na muna tayo dito. Uh, Abangan nyo na lang yung susunod kong video about sa defined terms. But I hope na nakatulong itong video ko para 
ma-recall or mas maintindihan ninyo yung tungkol sa mathematical system natin sa geometry. Geometry. Okay? So, see you again sa susunod at huwag mong kalimutan na i-share to sa mga kaklase mo para maintindihan nila ang topic ninyo about mathematical system. So, see you again and goodbye!